Jesus occasionally referred to himself as the Son of God. But much more often, he called himself the Son of Man. And that title tells us so much about Jesus. It tells us first about his humanity, the Son of Man. He was made in the likeness of men. That means that he had a physical body. He had human needs and characteristics. He knew what it was to be tempted, to weep, to grieve. All these aspects of humanness Jesus shared with us. We could never have been redeemed if Jesus had not become a man. God had to become flesh, take on our humanity and our physical limitations. Jesus did that when he came to earth as the incarnate son of God. He became the son of man. The son of man laid down his life. He was raised from the dead. He ascended to heaven. He is interceding for us today. And one day he will return to earth to judge the earth and to take dominion, to establish his eternal kingdom. He will reign forever and ever. He is the Son of God and the Son of Man. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men might become sons of God. Is that incredible? Galatians 4 says it this way, because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. We could never call God our Father until the Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men could become children of God. Your eternal destiny will be determined by your response to the Son. This is not just a theological set of teachings. This is not just something you read about in a book, or yeah, that's nice, yeah, I know Jesus is the Son of God, Son of Man, we sing about that, yeah, 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 whatever. No, not whatever. The eternal destiny of your body, soul, and spirit will be determined by how you respond to the Son.